وسهلا بكل الذين ينضموا للاستماع الى راديو بلدي او الراديو عربي امريكي ويعنى بقضايا العرب في المهجر. برامجنا في راديو بلدي كل يوم جمعه من الثامنه وحتى التاسعه صباحا مع ليلى الحسيني في بث حي ومباشر عبر دبليو ان زي كي راديو 690 اي ام صباح الخير بلدي صباح الخير لكل مستمعينا. Welcome to Radio Baladi, the first Arab, Middle Eastern and American simulcast radio show. Radio Baladi is broadcast every Friday morning on WNZK 690 AM from 8 until 9 Eastern Time on Good Morning Michigan with Layla Al Husseini. Our call in number 248-557-3300. And now, stay tuned for the best radio talk show on Arab and American issues with your host, Layla Al Husseini. <laughs> I am Atif Abdel Jawad. Join me the first Friday of each month at 8 a.m. Eastern Time. I will be discussing some of the most important issues and events in the Middle East live on America's Voice of the Arabs. WNZK 690 AM and WDMV 700 AM. Good morning. I am Atif Abdel Jawad in Washington, D.C. The difference between jihad and jay is the difference between terrorism and Hollywood. But we also want to talk about Syria, the conflict in Syria, the suffering in Syria. Syria is the most secular and most suffering country in the Middle East. Syrian American actor Jay Abdu is our guest. Mr. Abdu, good morning. Good morning. How are you? I am good. I want to start with today and then go back with you to yesterday. So tell us what you're doing today. Uh, what is your most recent movie assignment or role? Well, we just, uh, we just wrapped a movie um, called First Born. And uh, it's a romantic comedy uh, starring um, Tom Berenger and Al Kilmer, Denise Richards. Robert Nepper and me, and bunch bunch of um, very nice names in the United States and around the world. Your name is Jihad, but your name now, you were born Jihad, but your name now is Jay. Tell us why you changed your name. Why you had to change your name? Oh, it's a. Uh, an interesting story that when when I first came to this country and uh, I started introducing myself to people and I was like uh, my name is Jihad and they would like stop for a minute and think about it and just stare at me and maybe I felt they were a little bit skeptical and uh, shocked sometimes. So some people ask me, is this your name? Or is this a name? Because people were scared of the concept they've heard in the news and they thought maybe I I carry the same concept in my in my mind, in my feelings, in my you know, and I had to explain to everyone I was introduced to that this is just a name. It's my name. It doesn't have anything with the with the uh, to do with the with the concept that they've heard in the news. So they've always imagined uh, you know, some terror, some you know, some I don't know fighters, some jihadists. So it was always related to jihadists. And I had to explain that this name is not, because uh, so many people in the 
Arab world are named jihad and they don't believe in terror, they don't believe in, uh, in violence, and it could be also a Christian name that my, I was named upon or after a, a, a gentleman who was called jihad and he was Christian. And they were shocked as well. So all this, all that put together, I said to myself, why bother? A name is just a name. It always happened. Uh, I don't need to explain, to keep explaining to people. So let me change my name and be comfortable with introducing myself from now on. And this is what happened. So uh, take us back to Syria and how you started your career in the movie industry. Uh, how, how did it happen that you became a star, a movie star in uh, Syria, in the Arab world? And uh, how long ago was that? Oh, uh, well, let me go before that a little bit. Um, in, the, that in, the, in the 80s, I traveled to Europe for study. Uh, I got a scholarship to Romania and uh, went there to study. I uh, started uh, studying for uh, civil engineering. And while there, uh, we started, my friends and I, to play on stage, to perform in Romanian language, and to play a viol- I to play some music. So it was like kind of expressing our culture on stage. And uh, we did. We did pretty well. So, my one of my professors, actually one of my best professors, or he invited me over for dinner, and he said, "You better go back home and study acting and become an actor." I said, "I said, but I'm already an engineer, and uh, I'm, I'm almost graduating." said, yeah, but uh, you have this uh, art in your in your soul, in your spirit, so don't lose it. So I went back home, I studied acting for four more years, and uh, after graduation, in no time, like in 18 months, I became one of the top promising actors in Syria and the Middle East. I started working in TV, in, on, in, on stage, in movies, short movies, everything, even for the radio. And uh, then I became one of the busiest, more prominent actors in Syria. And ever since, I was landed um, leading roles, uh, supporting roles, um, and mostly the controversial roles the complex, the deep, those who I really enjoyed playing in front of the camera or on stage. So it was it was a very, very hot period of my life when I was so busy and I can say that from ninety two till two thousand eleven when the uprising We will talk about the uprising and what's going on in Syria in a few minutes. Um, But uh, I I suppose when you started uh, uh, performing in Romania, and you you were performing in Arabic for the Arab community there, right? I was performing in Romanian, not in my language. I in, in Romanian language for the Romanian public audience. Oh, so you speak Romanian too? Yes, yes, because oh. I studied there for six years. Uh, okay, so how, how how does it feel to speak? Um, did you did you feel? Uh, you know, I guess what I'm trying to say is, when you acting, when you are acting, you live the role, uh, and living the role is done through the language uh, that you. Uh, you associate with uh, with your language. That, that, how did it happen? How did you feel did acting you... in Romanian? 
Well, to be honest with you, because I spoke the Romanian very well, um, I, I, I didn't, I didn't feel I was acting. Uh, maybe because I already uh, spoke it easily, or I have this easiness with the languages, with all languages. Whenever, whenever I live in a country. And I start in, uh, uh, speaking the language. I don't. I forget that I'm speaking another language. So it became more. It becomes more authentic. Uh, let's say more natural for me to perform. Yes. And I, to be honest with you, I didn't feel I was speaking another language. Oh, it was okay. Super, yeah, it was super uh, easy. Right. That that's really unique. How many languages do you speak? Uh, I can say I speak four languages strongly: English, Arabic, Spanish, and Romanian. And I, I, uh, if we go to other languages, that work, work in, work in uh, knowledge in French and Russian. And how did you get to speak all those languages? I don't, <laughs> I don't know, but I, you know, uh, I feel like. I feel like I like I like languages, and on the other side, I don't I can't I can't sit relax. I need to get I need to keep learning something. This is my this is my this is my personality. I I like to learn more things, like always to know something new. Uh, because I like languages, I keep learning languages, and I, I think this is the whole story. So at home uh, right now, do you speak uh, with your family in in Syrian Arabic? Yes, with, because my wife is Syrian, I, I I speak to her in Arabic. But uh, uh, sometimes I I say a word or two in in, in English. But it, yeah, mostly in Arabic. Yes, uh, that's 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 normal. When you live in a different country, you kind tend to mix uh, languages together. Um, so, are you based now in what Los Angeles, or are you talking to us now from where? I I am based in Los Angeles. Um, first, we came to uh, my wife when we when we came to the United States. She came to Minneapolis. She came to Minneapolis with a with a scholarship. So I joined her in Minneapolis, and then we moved to Los Angeles and. Uh, we are here. We live in Los Angeles now. Right. So um, now I want to start uh, with you, your journey in Syria. Uh, mm -hmm. And to do that, uh, I want to first see how you ended up, just to give our audience uh, a flavor of how did it happen that you were a famous superstar in your country, in Syria, and then all of a sudden you are in the U.S. So, in 2011, um, you know, we all know that the Arab Spring started in uh, Tunisia, and it kept spreading out to the to the other countries around. So it went from Tunisia to, what, Egypt, then to Libya, then Yemen, and then it came to Syria. So when it started, uh, people started marching in the streets demanding universal rights, dignity, freedom. And uh, uh, I... To be honest with you, I didn't, I couldn't march because I, I was afraid of being arrested or shot in the streets because they, this is what they did. The government started. They answered those demands with uh, violence, uh, with arrest, and torture. So meanwhile, the government put pressure on all those public figures to support this military approach out loud in the media, which 
I uh, didn't approve, and I was against totally. And in a totalitarian country like Syria, it's not an option to say, no, I won't do it. So either you do it, either you march for the president or you appear on TV and praise the president in his name and the army and the military approach, or you end up arrested and tortured, and maybe, I don't know, or you flee the country. Okay. Okay, Jihad. Let me, uh, Jay. Uh, let me uh, just uh, interrupt you here for a second. We're uh -huh. gonna pick up your conversation uh, in a few seconds after this break. Life is a nonprofit charity that's provided humanitarian aid and development to people and communities for over 25 years, regardless of race, color, religion, or cultural background. When disaster occurs here or around the world, Life for Relief and Development rushes in to provide food, medical aid, and shelter to those in need. Please help improve these efforts. Make your tax-deductible donation to Life now at lifeusa.org or call 248-424-7493. When it comes to reproductive medicine, IVF Michigan Fertility Centers are the recognized leaders. With locations in Bloomfield Hills and five other cities in Michigan and Ohio, IVF has experts in all aspects of the field. As a founding member of IVF Michigan Fertility Centers, Dr. Nicholas Shama is one of the leading reproductive endocrinologists in Michigan and Ohio. Dr. Shama has performed over 10,000 IVF cases and has helped thousands of couples fulfill their dreams of parenthood. American board certified in both obstetrics and gynecology and reproductive endocrinology and infertility, Dr. Nicholas Shama is a very caring, compassionate, expert physician that understands not only the medical but also the emotional toil of infertility on his patients. When it's time, get personalized care from Dr. Nicholas Shama at IVF Michigan Fertility Centers in Michigan and Ohio. Call toll-free 855-952-9600, 855-952-9600. بدأناه معكم وعهدناكم على أن نستمر بمزيد من المتعة والعروض الحصرية على قناتي زي ألوان وزي أفلام زي ألوان هي أول وأكبر قناة مسلسلات عربية هندية في أمريكا أضخم الإنتاجات مسلسلات حصرية ومع زي أفلام فأنتم على موعد مع مغامرة جديدة كل يوم لاكتشاف سحر بولي تابعوا حصريا قناة زي ألوان وزي أفلام الآن في أمريكا على ديش نتورك وسلينك تي في I am Atif Abdel Jawad Join me the first Friday of each month at 8 a.m. Eastern Time I will be discussing some of the most important issues and events in the Middle East live on America's Voice of the Arabs. WNZK 690 AM and WDMV 700 AM. Welcome back to our conversation with Jay Abdu, a Syrian superstar who had to leave his own country and take up a job in the U.S. as a pizza delivery man. We're going to ask Mr. Abdu why he had to do that. Mr. Abdu, you were talking about the Syrian uprising. Go ahead. So, um, yeah, I... Uh I decided to leave for a while to wait because in Tunisia I thought in Tunisia the 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 president stepped down and he just fled to Saudi Arabia in in one night. I mean in 19 days he left. In Egypt the president uh, Husni Mubarak stepped down. I said it will happen in Libya, you know, with the intervention and all of that. So I said, it will happen. One day, it will happen. So let me leave, like some of my friends left and did. Let me leave the country, wait for a while. My wife was in the United States. 
and I'll leave for a while and come back when the when the country is settled, when all things are back to life, to normal. So I'll come, I'll come back to another Syria. We'll enjoy democracy and, you know, freedom. And this is what I did. I just left to Minneapolis, where, I, where my wife was studying. She, she came here to the country with a Fulbright scholarship. Uh, she's a she's a smart woman, <laughs> and uh, I joined her in October 2011. So you were not so, really forced to leave the country. It, I can say I was forced. I, nobody told me to leave, but I understood the message because they were arresting friends, they were arresting artists, and torture them and release them to send the message to others. I didn't want to be tortured in prison. So I understood the lesson, and I was scared to death uh, before I, I left. So that's why I took the decision, because I was fighting with my wife over the phone, and I was telling her, no, I'm not leaving, I'm not leaving, please. And she was, please just come and visit. I said, no, you finish your studies and come back. I am filming here, I'm busy. And to be honest with you, I didn't want to leave because, you know, why leave when your career is on top? I mean, when your career is flourishing and you are super busy and people know you and, you know, and you're comfortable in your, I mean, in your work, in your life and your family and friends. But when you feel you're not safe, and you are under pressure, and you are threatened. So that's why I decided to leave, because I wanted to protect my life. Uh, Jay, I have uh, Mr. Samir Haddad on, uh, on the telephone. He has a question or a comment for you. Uh, Mr. Haddad, uh, good morning. Go ahead. Uh, good morning to both of you. And uh, last night I just watched... Uh, uh, the Desert Queen, the movie, talks about yes. Gertrude Bill, who was a Rassam and a Kharawaiya and a Musawar and a Jesus in Britain. And I wish uh, you guys switch to talking about uh, Mr. Abdu, since he's an actor, on acting uh, and about his roles he played, and especially The Desert Queen uh, with uh, Nicole Kid Kid Kidman, and instead of bashing the, you know, the Syrian government, by by saying this, let me ask Mr. Abdu Sabah Khaira, or Mr. Abdu, what the hell is on the film that is in Arabic and English? The film that is in Nicole Kidman, and the film that is in the servant or the guide, and the film that is in the Rababa, and you were a very excellent role. So, Ali Laka, so Ali Laka, I don't know if you read the book by late Dr. Jack Shaheen. Uh, the Real Bad Arab, How Hollywood Fortifies a People, with a kalam on the stereotype in the movies. Yes. yes. So, Ali, is uh, the Desert Queen, what does it set? Is it a stereotype about the Arabs? And I listen uh, through the radio. And thank you. Uh, before you uh, answer, um, Jay, I just want to tell our guest, uh, Mr. Haddad, that uh, he is a little ahead of us uh, on oh. the program. Of course, <laughs> okay. we were going, we still have uh, more than a half hour to go, and we certainly were planning to go through uh, the movies and different achievements uh, accomplished uh, by um, by Jay Abdu. So uh, with that, um, I'll let you answer his question. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Samir, uh, for this wonderful question. Uh, I really enjoyed the movie. Queen of the Desert was one of my, it was my big break in the United States and it took me to another, it took my performance to, and my life to another level. Uh, thanks to Mr. Werner Herzog, the director who cast me to play opposite Nicole Kidman, um, her guide in the desert, who was really Syrian. Uh, well, like Mr. Jack said in his in his book about the stereotyping, there is kind of stereotyping in the in Hollywood, or it used to be, but I think it's less than before. 
because the audience are demanding some some something else people know already so the the audience is different the writers are different they're tackling other subjects and they're tackling they're changing the stere- they're breaking the stereotype all the stereotypes like we see now in Hollywood everything is different the movies like if i give you an example all the parts that i played in the united states were good people in my preference all my life i like to play the villain and i'm not landing I'm not any landing. villain i landed good roles in hollywood like fatouh the guide was a noble guy uh, very honest yeah he wasn't sophisticated but he was good hearted man he helped me uh, 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 get truth bell to achieve her mission and she would tell him at the end of the movie she would tell her i don't know what i what i could have done without you you made my life safer and my mission possible then in another movie and in another tv show everything was very good man noble man so i think the stereotyping or the stereotype is now broken and we can see in some movies the terrorist and on the opposite we can see the noble man the smart like you see in so many movies like the big sick uh, i mean yeah the stereotype i think it started to be broken not not as before okay i hope uh, um, mr haddad would allow us now to uh, continue with your uh, other movies uh, uh, movies that you are proud to have taken part in whether in syria or after you left syria but uh, we'll do that when we come back after the break. The Rama Relief Foundation provides humanitarian aid into areas inside of war-torn Syria, as well as aid to the refugees who have fled to the neighboring countries in the Middle East. The foundation offers food baskets, container shipment, mental health, education, soup kitchens, and more. Go to ramarelief.org or call 248-990-4247. Any donation amount made to Rama will go to sustaining many lives. Call now, 248 248-99- Are you going to start a restaurant or grocery store soon? Do you need floor plans and designs? Call Najee Aboud at 734-744-9796. Do you want to buy kitchen and restaurant equipment at discount prices? Call Najee Aboud now, 734-744-9796. New concept products and design, the trademark of kitchen equipment. 5% discount on all purchases of $75,000 or more. New concept products and design. New location, 31185 Schoolcraft in Livonia. Learn more at www.newconceptproducts.com. Call Najee Aboud, 734-744-9796. Join me the first Friday of each month at 8 a.m. Eastern Time. I will be discussing some of the most important issues and events in the Middle East live on America's Voice of the Arabs. WNZK 690 AM and WDMV 700 AM. Welcome back to our conversation with Jay Abdu, a Syrian superstar who had to leave his own country and take up a job in the U.S. as a flower delivery man. What a nice job. Um, Mr. Abdu, I read or I heard that you had to go to Morocco and you did not have a visa to go to Morocco, but you made it uh, eventually. Tell us that adventure, please. (laughs) Now, when I remember that, those days and that stress, now I can laugh because it was a very tough experience. I came to this country as a refugee. My money ended and my passport expired. And I applied for for an asylum. I applied for asylum and then I was approved 
And to travel after I was cast in the movie, Queen of the Desert, uh, the production told me, you have to be in Morocco um, like in 40 days. In 40 days, we are going to Morocco. So you better start doing your papers and preparing for travel. So, you know, as a refugee, you have to apply for a travel document. And this is what we did. Um, we applied for a travel document and we expedited that to have it fast. Uh, it wasn't easy, you know. My wife is uh, studied law by, back home, so she read the whole website of the immigration services, everything, and she managed to expedite the, the travel document for me, and we sent it to, to the consulate, but the consulate returned it blank, just nothing on it. But, and I said, what is the problem here? Because it was a travel document or what? Oh, my God. So, yeah, I, I, I met, I, I went and I met someone there and I explained that I have a movie. And so uh, I'm going there for a movie. I'm going, I, I'm, I'm, I'm leaving Morocco. I'm not staying in Morocco. And he knew me from, from TV and and he believed me, of course, and he, he said, of course, we will uh, we welcome you. And then I got the visa and went there, and it was it was very stressful for me, you know, that week of the... I said, oh, my God, after I, well, after I, I landed this role, I'll, I'll lose it for, for, for papers, for, you know, for visa, for a visa. So it was very stressful for me, but... It happened. I made it and went there and filmed for like two months in Morocco. Yeah. Jay, uh, we have uh, our friend uh, Jerry Habba on uh, the telephone, and he has a question or a comment for you. Go ahead, Mr. Habba. Thank you, Dr. Abdijawad. Good morning. And uh, to your guest, Mr. Jay Abdu, good morning. Uh, good morning. I have a thank you, and good luck with your movie. Mr. Jay Abdu, my question is, in, uh, you know about four languages besides Arabic, and Kurdish language is the second language after Arabic in your country, Syria. My first question, did you learn to speak Kurdish? And the second question is, is Mr. J. Abdu will return to his home country, Syria, if President Bashar Assad no longer in power? I will listen to your answer, and thank you very much. Thank you for this question. Um, well, uh, you know, I didn't learn Kurdish, but I played in a in a movie called um, Valley of the Wolves. It was shot in Turkey, and I played opposite Billy Zane, um, the the American star from Titanic and other great movies. I played opposite him, the Kurdish leader in in Turkey. So I had to learn some Turkish further part, and it wasn't bad. It was very quick in two days, and everybody said it was it was good. But unfortunately, I don't speak Kurdish. Uh, and the other other question: uh, If I would return to Syria after Bashar Assad would step down, I said, "Yeah, I would love to go back to my country." I would love to go back to my family. My parents are still there. My friends, some of my friends are still there. Um, the streets, the, the memories, the everything. The, I mean, the directors and some of the people who, you know, who didn't leave, who uh, either supported uh, the president or, you know, or shut up or they didn't express their um, their feelings. Uh, they are still there. And above everything, my family are still there. My mother, my father, I've never seen them for, you know, for seven years now. I would love to go and hug them and talk to them because I really miss them. They do miss me. And it's not easy to be apart from what you've grown up with and what you love. And yes, I would go. Where are your parents right now, uh, Jay? Uh, they're based in Damascus, in the capital. How do you describe, what is the most pressing 
problem right now for Syria or, or for Syrians in the country? Well, the lack, the lack of, of safety. Nobody is safe anymore. You can find everything you look for, but it's expensive, especially medication. Uh, you can find food, but you've got to have money because everything, the price has doubled or maybe tripled. One of the things that so many people are displaced, you know, this year, I mean, the, the Syrians carry the biggest number of displaced people in the world now. Uh, half of population is displaced. Now, so many people inside Syria sleep in the park under trees um, in different places, and it's a, a huge problem for those displaced people because they don't have housing. The social fabric has been destroyed because of the conflict, because of the proxy war, and it's a mess. It's a mess. And the, the most, the most, I mean, the darkest problem that we don't see any ending for this crisis. So, uh, I, I, this is a tough question, uh, Jay, uh, but some people argue that President Bashar al-Assad is a better alternative than anything else uh, over there. Yeah, they. I mean, people are free to think whatever they want to, uh, but if we go back, I have another opinion, like also so many people who think so, that the Assad family is the cause or the origin of the whole problem in the in the country and maybe in so many other countries. All right, uh, we have uh, our friend uh, Adil uh, Mozeb uh, is uh, on the line uh, on the telephone right now. He he also has a question or a comment for you. Go ahead, mm -hmm. uh, Adil. Uh, Dr. Joa, thank you for taking my call. Uh, for, first of all, I'd like to thank you for hosting uh, the artist Jay Abdul. And uh, I have uh, kind of two questions. My first question was about the duty as an artist. Obviously, artists have messages in their movies. What do you view that as towards your country? And the other question, where do you want to see Syria in, in the future, in, say, in a couple of months or in, in this coming year? What's the best scenario for the country, in, in your opinion? Uh, thank you for your okay. question. Uh, my duty as an artist is to express the truth, to bring up the truth on screen, on stage, when I'm interviewed, uh, the, the truth that I know, and to speak up always, to spread the word, and to keep talking to everyone. Because I am, I am in favor of the dialogue. We need to keep talking to each other no matter what. Uh, and we need to put our papers on the table. This is my fight. This is my duty. This is my concern. This is my non-stop mission in this life, to say the truth, what I believe, what I want, to never stop doing that. And most of all, in an artistic way, or if I can, in a movie. Second, second of all, if, I, if you ask me about where do you see Syria in the upcoming month, I say, I don't know. I don't know. It's not clear. The players are, the, 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 the actors, the players there are so many. I don't understand politics. I'm not a politician. I can't read politics because it's super complicated for me. I prefer to, to be in art. But what I think that it will take more time. I mean, I can see it taking more time and more. All the parties are still there fighting, and it became a proxy war, and it's not after one person or two or three parties or four parties. So I'm, I'm terribly sad for that, to say that, because I am sad and I don't see an ending to it. I feel sometimes, or all the time, I feel frustrated and depressed. And I'm sorry to say this answer, to tell this answer, but this is the truth. We'll be back after the break. Ziad Brand. Quality products from our family to yours. Ziad Brothers Importing offers the finest quality products, including brands like Sultan, Kraft, Nestle, Hook, Rico Picon, Donna, and many more. Ask your retailer to carry these fine products because you deserve the very best. For more information, visit our website at www.ziad.com. That's www.ziad.com. 
Ziad, quality products from our family to yours. When you're looking for the best in optical care, Dr. Imad Nakash is your doctor to see. With years of experience and thousands of successful procedures performed, you can trust your eyes to Dr. Imad Nakash. See Dr. Imad Nakash and his professional staff for your eye care needs. There's two locations to serve you. In Hazel Park, call 248-336-3937. 248-336-3937. In Rochester Hills, call 248-299-3937. That's 248-299-3937. I am Atif Abdel Jawad. Join me the first Friday of each month at 8 a.m. Eastern Time. I will be discussing some of the most important issues and events in the Middle East live on America's Voice of the Arabs. WNZK 690 AM and WDMV 700 AM. Welcome back to our conversation with uh, Syrian superstar Jay Abdu, Jihad Abdu. Mr. Abdu, Tell us what was the performance in Syria that made you what you are, Jihad Abdu, J. Abdu. It was one that was very, very famous at the time. It was called Ukhwet al-Turab, Brothers in Sand, or something like, if you, were, you want to translate it, uh, the Brothers in Sand, or the Soil, or the, you know, uh, it was about big Syrian revolution that when we were ruled by the Ottomans, I was playing a leader who was in the Ottomans, and then uh, he defects when he found when he finds out that the Ottomans were occupying the country but not uh, ruling the, I mean, well, and he was deceived with the empire, the whole empire, and. He and his friends formed the first revolution in 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 the region, which called Asura Suri al Kubra, the big Syrian revolution, and then they took over the cities where he lived. So Akhwati Turab was the biggest TV show that put me on the map in the Arab world. Okay, Mr. Abdu, we have um, our friend uh, Khalil Hashim on the telephone. Go ahead, Mr. Hashim. Good morning, gentlemen. How are you today? Good morning, Mr. Khalil. Nice talk. Thank you so much. We are so proud of your accomplishments, uh, uh, you know, whether in Syria or in Hollywood. This is really a great story for, you. you know, a refugee and to, to, to have gone through what you've gone through and then your, what your accomplishments. On the um, artistic side, what is next? I mean, you've been in really great projects. Is, is there anything else coming up you're working on? The sure. second question is, uh, what would it take to bring the Syrian people together? You know, the war war is nasty and has a broader division among the people. What would it take to bring them together? Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, thank you for these wonderful questions. Well, uh, first you. of all, I, I, we just wrapped this, I said, I, we just wrapped a movie called First Born, and it's a very nice comedy. Uh, romantic comedy and maybe political. Please stay tuned and keep an eye on the movie called First Born. It has uh, starring uh, Val Kilmer, uh, Robert Nepper, uh, Tom Berenger, Denise Richards, and so many others. Um, uh, I think it will come out this coming uh, April. For the Regarding your second question, what would bring the Syrian people together? It's not easy to bring all the parties together, but I think the love for Syria and the love for their country would bring them. If they really care about their country, they would come together. And there is something that we all miss and we don't think about, is the democracy and accepting the other. And if we believe in equality and justice, everybody will come together with everyone and will listen to the other voice and to the opposite opinion. This is my belief, hopefully. Mr. Abdu, um, 
What do you think, how do you assess, evaluate the role or achievements of uh, people, artists uh, before you who contributed in Hollywood, such as al uh, the Syrian producer, and also Omar Sharif, for example, and others? So I hope, I hope that one day, uh, I'm looking forward to that day when I can bring my values the, the values of my people uh, to and tell the Americans and the whole world that in Syria we have great civilization. We have more than one civilization. And we really have honest people who work hard, become always successful and unique. And this is what I noticed about from the Syrian community in in the United States and around the world, that they are hard workers and they are honest and they are approachable and they don't like to be numbers. They like to be prominent and unique. Like I give you an example. If someone becomes a doctor, he wants to be a unique doctor, the best doctor, the most respectful doctor in his career. If he is a shop art owner, he wants to be different. He wants to be distinguished, you know. And this is what makes us different. We try and strive to become or to give the best impression possible about the human achievement. I wish to do that in movies. I, I'm looking forward to that day to tell the world that we carry this civilization in our DNA. One of the puzzling questions, at least to myself, is my knowledge that Syria is the most tolerant and secular country, people in the region, in the Middle East. And yet we are seeing part of the problem in Syria now is the impact of uh, religious intolerance. How do you respond to that? Well, from the first beginning, Assad, the father, used divided people and he worked on sectarianism to be, for him to, to lead this country easier. Uh, you know, the, when we say divide and conquer, and it started to happen in the 70s. It's a long story. It's not recent. And he worked hard on that by dividing by 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 uh, by giving the opportunities to those who appreciated him, and it became something that worse than any other country. And people knew that because I had uh, friends from other sects, from other religions, and we lived very well together in peace. But when you create the war, and you use religion to infuse this war and this fire then it, it becomes something that you can avoid and the whole country becomes a place where all fighters from around the world will come to join to fight for their belief. And uh, I think that this is what I told you the, when I said I think he is the source of the problem because he makes the religion and uses the religion to infuse the fire and to implement the differences and the fight. Jay Abdu, we have uh, two minutes left uh, for us, and um, within two minutes, uh, tell me how do you see the future of the movie industry, uh, generally, not just in Syria, but in, in the Arab world, uh, generally? Uh, well, uh, you know what, these days we have a very good number of young people who bring new talents, new concepts, and powerful visions to this industry. And I believe that these or those talents, either directors, writers, uh, actors, they will bring new ideas and new concepts. And I think that the, the industry will flourish. And yesterday I, uh, I attended the, the movie The Insult, the Lebanese movie uh, directed by Ziad Dwayri. It's a screening here. It's nominated for the Oscars. It's a Lebanese movie, feature, so I'm so proud of this movie. I'm pr so proud of the story, the cinematography, the acting, and the camera, everything. It was impressive, impressive. It was, I'm so proud of 
those filmmakers who can create, who can uh, compete and reach to the Oscars, to the top of the top. So I can tell you that the movie industry in the Arab world is flourishing and uh, it's still promising. And I'm so, I'm so proud of it. Thank you, Jay Abdul, serious uh, superstar living the American dream. Thank you very much, and I will see you the first Friday next month. Goodbye.